Hey, hey there, business owner. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Evolution Podcast. This is our weekly episode, and I'm so happy you are here. Let's get started. Welcome to this week's episode of the Entrepreneur Evolution Podcast. I'm your host, Annette Walter. I'm a business growth coach, operations strategist, and owner of two multi-million dollar companies. This is the place where business owners and entrepreneurs like you show up to learn from each other and build a community of entrepreneurs that are sharing real business, real tips, and real advice on their path to build their empire and really build the community and support their families and continue evolving. Today, I am joined by Alex Jacobs. He is the owner of Copper Mine. Copper Mine is in the Mount Washington, Cross Keys, Canton, and Owings Mills locations, just to name a few of his 12 operations around the Baltimore and surrounding areas. He focuses on achieving excellence and offers programs for the entire family, whether it's summer camps, tennis programs, exercise. He's really about the total family approach to health and wellness. And his story is really inspiring. He is great and honest and real and offers wonderful, wonderful, wonderful tips about his journey. And he's just getting started 12 locations and has his eyes really on a lot of great things in the future. I know you're going to learn so much today. And this podcast is about you. This is about your journey. This is about helping you and supporting you. I have a passion for entrepreneurs and for your growth. I don't want you to feel alone. We are building a community here, and I want you more involved in the community if you aren't right now. Thank you for being a podcast listener. And if you want to learn more about private coaching or being involved on our biweekly groups, there's nothing like it in the marketplace. And we are making huge progress. And also, I just opened up our April Accelerator, which is a jumpstart program for those that just need that push in the right direction into second quarter. So make sure you reach out to me. It is me personally helping you. You won't get someone else on the phone, you will get me. So let's have a conversation around you and your business and let's see how we can help you evolve. I am proud of you, entrepreneur. Welcome to this week's episode. I know you're gonna enjoy this interview. Thanks for being here. Keep evolving, entrepreneur. I am so proud of you. Welcome, Alex. I'm so happy you are here. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Today, we are joined by Alex Jacobs. He is the owner of Copper Mine. And for those that are located here in Baltimore in the area, you know Copper Mine well. I'm sure that you have either been there yourselves or your children have experienced some sort of amazing birthday party or summer camp. Uh, But your your growth has been amazing. And I'm really excited that you're here today to share that story to our audience of entrepreneurs that are growing and just to share your story. So thanks for being here. Yeah, no problem, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So take us back to the beginning. Like, you know, I know you went to Denison. Tell us how you graduated and what that looked like and just paint the picture for us, share your story. (laughs) Well, I'm not sure if I went to Denison for an education or just to to play lacrosse. Um, Uh (laughs) And I had a great experience there when I got out of college. Um, You know, actually through college, I was hustling. I started my own uh, t-shirt business, selling shirts and things like that. And that's what helped me pay for my school, my education. I was always trying to hustle and, and do things because I was on financial aid. I was on scholarships and grants and things like that because I had to pay for my own school. So I think I learned early on that I had to figure out a way to create my own worth, my own, my own uh, pathway. And when I got out of school, I actually started coaching, which does not pay that well when you get out of college. Um, I was an assistant coach and I actually worked for a screen printing and embroidery company doing t-shirts. And I worked there for, um, I think it was probably about a year. And then I decided, you know, I could probably do this myself and and then started my own, uh, I would say real company that had a real tax ID and those sort of things and Mm -hmm. started that, I believe when I was 25 years old. So um, that's, that's kind of the, the pathway from there. And then did that for 10 years and, and, and just kind of grinded it out, learned a lot of things. And I would say as an entrepreneur for any other entrepreneurs, I feel like every day I'm learning. I'm a better entrepreneur today, even now than I was a month ago or two months ago. And I think 
always that ambition to continue to learn and improve on myself and understand different things that I might not have known 10 years ago, five years ago, three years ago, 10, 10 months ago is really important. So that pathway led me, you know, to, to various different entities. I started several different companies and, and at the, the time of my one company sale, I decided that I wanted to get into kids fitness. My kids were two at the time and I wanted to get into kids sports. And that's how the journey from Coppermine started. It was really in 2011. Okay. Uh, and prior to that, it was really research, looking at facilities, looking online and those sort of things. So that's kind of where it evolved and how it started was in 2011. So, mm -hmm. so really a big piece of you, of your family and your family's growth and development and wanting to do something for and with your kids that you weren't really seeing out there. Right. Yeah, it, it was... It, you know, again, it was, it was just a passion. I love sports. I, I, I like the, the venue. I like the um, opportunity for me and probably for most entrepreneurs. I think I'm scatterbrained and having a big vanilla box with multiple buckets of different potential revenue streams or potential sub little companies inside of there is appealing. It's thrilling to have that. So it's been very, very fulfilling um, and being able to create those little sub pockets or little companies within them has been amazing. So, absolutely. And we we talk about this lot a lot in this community how entrepreneurs can get bored mm -hmm. at times, or um, you know, the flip side of that is I like to say that we're always continuous, curious learners, as you said, and we need that stimulation, right? We need that momentum. We need, we almost get that giddiness about learning something new and, and really working towards our personal development and our team's development, right? right? So tell us about the first location, 2011. How do you identify that? How do you, how do you get started? How do you, you know, I know you had a lot of things going on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely relate to the scatteredness. That's me to a T. Um, but that's that's what that's how we're wired, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us about the first location and what that looked like. So it was an, really an original dance gymnastics birthday party location with no sports. They had summer camps here. Um, it was uh, called Gerstung on Falls Road, and they had been around for a long time. And when I looked at the opportunity and saw, okay, it's, it's kind of a smaller niche, not much marketing, not much advertising and pretty much old school, not to knock them what they had done, but it just, mm -hmm. I think as, as technology has evolved, mm -hmm. some people kind of hang on to old ways. And so that was our first acquisition was that location. And then the amazing part about it was we just had a good, great group of people that came on board. And that nucleus really in the first year is still here. And it's amazing because, and I attribute, you know, a lot of our success to um, the staff that we've had because they've done so many different things within the organization. And I would say I'm, you know, the visionary and kind of do all these, you know, long-term planning or short-term planning, but the folks that we've had have been really the warriors on the ground. They're the ones that get most of the credit for building a relationship with the parents and the families. And that's who trusts us. So when we took over, we had a great crew that came in and we started with, with summer camps and then added sports and then started um, doing different opportunities with programs with kids and that grew and parents started wanting more. Um, we started expanding locations and finding different opportunities um, outside of this one on Falls Road. We started going down to the, the city within New Burns Arena and then some other locations outside of that. And then it kind of grew over time to, to about 12 locations. So. Wow. It's amazing. And you and I actually met at a banking event, a banking luncheon. Uh, I don't even know, maybe a year or so ago. And, you know, so talk to us about the whole banking strategy and banking relationship there. Yeah. You know, are you buying the locations, uh, you know, and, and how important is that banking relationship? Uh, it's, you know, if anybody, yeah, for anybody that's starting out, it's, it's really important. And I didn't know, and I didn't know this growing, you know, I started my first company, which was Chesapeake Design Works, how important a banking relationship is. Mm -hmm. As the, the purchases get larger or lines of credit are needed or equipment financing, mm -hmm. you start to realize how important that relationship is. And, and I was fortunate to have a good banking relationship early on. And the needs, obviously, at that time weren't as great as they are now. They continue to get to become more and more. Um, but having that banking relationship is, is critical and having somebody you know is going to be in the industry for a while 
is yeah. really important because I've, we've gone through a lot of bankers and a lot of different banks. Um, and I think it's just one of those things, banking, banking relationships, insurance relationships are very important. Um, and uh, those two things have been critical for us. So. Absolutely. You know, and then couple that with a solid attorney and a solid accountant and really your mini and HR, you know, outsourced HR or internal HR. It's really your advisory board uh, that that becomes your go to when you are looking at new opportunities. So 12 locations. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it it, it feels like how you're sharing the story. You just blink dry and you're like, oh, we're at 12 locations. So so get into that a little bit. Tell us like, you know, what. What was one of the big pain points and what was one of the big joy points of that growth? Is there really any joy? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say that, you know, for us, each location is an opportunity and extension of giving more opportunities to our staff. Mm-hmm. We couldn't expand if I didn't know that we had a staff that could fulfill and, and create that or fill the void of an empty facility or marketing a facility or staffing a facility. So strategically, some facilities that we've taken over, there was no programming in there or there, it was a different use. So that takeover is a little bit more challenging than taking over a facility. For instance, our, our location in Carroll County was an existing facility that was going, um, that was going under or failing. Mm-hmm. So identifying an empty or blank canvas, going through pro formas, thinking, you know, we think we can do this. Do we have the right personnel to do this? Yes, we do. Is there a void in the marketplace for programming? Yes, there's a void in the marketplace for programming. Our customers want this. Okay, great. That's a risk that then we take that to our bank and say, hey, this is our pro forma. This is what we can do. This is what we think we can do. And that trust is allowing us to go and say, okay, we can purchase this asset, program it, market it, and fulfill it. On the flip side, we've done several of those. Um, you know, one was Norris Field, one was the Northwest Ice Rink. Again, just kind of blank canvases and us saying we can, we can do this. Um, the one in Carroll County, the, the great part about that is we saw a team of people in there that were amazing. They, they had just a great uh, group of people that have been running that facility and they just need some tailwind to help them out. And I think that's what we provided. They run it amazingly well they're very trustworthy and they they get it and so that synergy and that opportunity for us because of those people and those relationships and and their ideas and visions coupled with ours has worked out very well same thing happened with bear hills you know got great staff great people okay great i'm not i'm not a micromanager i don't i don't need to be one here's what we can do we know that we can market your facilities and bring in programs and and other things can you guys support them? They say they can. So that's that's the two different scenarios that we've kind of followed. Uh, they're both different, but they seem to be working well for us. That's great. So how would you describe your risk level? Are you a big risk taker? Do you not think about risk? It sounds like it's calculated risks, but are you ever have, have those moments of doubt or fear? Do they creep in? I think I have fear every single day, you know, that, that it's always there. And if I didn't have the fear, I wouldn't work as hard as I did. So I don't ever want to be complacent. I think that's that's probably my biggest fear is being complacent and, I, and, and being obsolete. So that is the driving force behind me. I would say on a risk level, I take a lot of risk, but I do try to map out and say, okay, I understand this market. I understand the customer. I understand the employee can we make this work? I'm not going to say, oh, I can start a restaurant tomorrow. That would be a big risk for me. Right. But if I look at a facility, say, okay, this is a new sport, a new market. Can we do that? Yeah, it's, it's similar to what we do. Um, let's go for it. Not to say that we couldn't eventually own a restaurant. I just have to study it more. You know, it's, it's, right. it's the same team is going to be in place as far as the accounting, the banking, all those other things. But we would have to re- hire the right person that understands that that can give me decisions. I will never be an entrepreneur that says, oh, I know how to do this. I know how to do that. I can do this because I would be, I would be done. We, the, we rely or I rely on so many people that understand what they're good at and I understand where, where, what I'm good at. So, mm-hmm. And isn't that great that you have your team of trusted advisors that you can really count on, you know, through the years, you, you know, you can text or call or just, you know, kind of, hey, I'm thinking this or I'm thinking this, right? Isn't that, isn't that great to get to that point? It's, it makes it easier. It, it really it, does. And it's, you know, thinking back, 
on the first company and, and so many people have a hard time and I've actually done some series and talked about this with people. It's getting the first start because you can overanalyze and analysis paralysis and all those other things, but people just have to start. They have to start somewhere and get into it. And from there, again, what, what am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? How do I, how do I grow? And there's, there's really, there's no, there's no reason that you, people should be fail, scared of failure because it's who cares, you know, unless it's, unless it's some huge risk, which I don't recommend in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But if you understand what's the worst thing that can happen, then uh, you're going to be okay. Love that. That's awesome. So tell me about your curriculum, because I, I have a lot of entrepreneurs out there in the audience and they're on the growth path um, as you are. When and how do you uh, develop your curriculum across 12 locations? So is it pretty centralized? Do you have one director? Like, talk to us a little bit about that because curriculum development, right? All of the different courses and programs and camps and everything that you're putting out, it's a constant, especially as we're, you know, a year after COVID, right? That's an important role. So, so help us learn more about that. So we have a few people inside of organization that have written curriculum or write the protocols and do an amazing job with that. Um, and things did change. They changed a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and people at different tasks, whether it's rental directors or facility directors or our directors that are part of our, our, our in charge of our programs. Some of our programs did not run at all mm -hmm. uh, during COVID. We have club directors, whether it's lacrosse or soccer, gymnastics directors. So they're kind of in charge of their own little microcosm and, and things like that. Okay. Um, as we're looking, you know, towards the next stage of growth and how do we, how do we go from basically 12 to maybe 20 locations and then mm -hmm. tailor it back and say, okay, how can we grow even further? How do we almost uh, dumb it down a little bit and shrink, shrink the footprint and see how we can replicate that? This past six months, we've identified that we need to hire certain people that do, you know, hyper focus on really looking at the curriculum. So it is the same across every platform because as, through acquisitions, we've grown really quickly. It's not the same at everyone. And I want to make sure we get to that point where it is, if you're in Carroll County, it's the same feel and, and look and things like that that you're doing in Baltimore County or in Harper County or Anne Arundel County. So those sort of things are happening. Um, but right now I've just been focused on top line growth. And then we kind of go back and say, okay, this is how we can convert this over to the copper mine way. Right, absolutely. And where did the name stem from? I don't know if I know that story. Yeah. People story. ask me and I've, I've always made up like random things that <laughs> there, <laughs> there was, you know, there was copper, you know, kids coming out of the mouth. It, it, it's, it's because of the area. And I didn't know this either. Um, so apparently this area where we, we are was mined for copper. And the area just south of us is called Bear Hills because they would scrape the top of the mountains and leave the hills bare they would mine for copper and take it down to the inner harbor. Hmm. Um, our street, our road, our private road is called Copper Mine Terrace. So there was an old copper mine on this. We have kind of a hill here. There is a, a tall point hmm. in our, on our property. And so that must have been a, a, one of the locations where they had a mine. Oh, that's great. That's great. I never knew that. You know, you yeah. live in Baltimore your whole life and you just right. sometimes don't know these things. Right. That's great. Right. So... What, what keeps you going? Do you have, uh, are you a, a, a business book reader? Are you um, a podcast listener? Do you wake up and exercise? Like what's your groove? How do you keep on going as an entrepreneur? I know it's so cliche sometimes, right. but. Um, I, you know, I, I love what I do. I love the people that I'm around and that's very fortunate for me. Um, I love the hustle mm -hmm. and I think I'm addicted to some sort of the chaos where it is a chaotic business because it's ever evolving. You're dealing with kids uh, or parents, children, which can be um, their prized possession. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm, I'm really competitive and not in a negative way. I just, I, I like the competition just in business. I love capitalism. Mm -hmm. I, love, I love learning about it. I like understanding the real estate side of it. Cause I didn't understand that maybe 10 years ago. So that's a fascinating piece for me. Um, the operating businesses and understanding the synergistics between the operating entities and the real estate companies, both of which we own a lot of um, our locations mm -hmm. and having that understanding is, is, is fascinating to me. 
So I'm enjoying the ride. I'm enjoying the journey. It does. It, it, some days it sucks. I mean, it's hard. Um, it's and, and for m- most people that know, you know, you you are running to the bank a day before payroll happens. I mean, that's you know, that, that happens. There are cash flow shortages. There are competitors that come into your market. There are people that steal ideas and things like that. So um, you have basically a period of time to feel sorry for yourself. And then I just like getting back up and saying, OK, we're, here's how we're going to focus. Here's how we're going to go. Here's how we're going to lead. Here's how we're going to acquire. Here's how we're going to, you know, be the pillars in this this community and, and focus on moving forward. So, I love I love that you just said uh, honestly all of that, and I love especially that you said addicted to the chaos, addicted to the hustle. And literally, my husband and I were having this conversation this morning over coffee about you know we're like sometimes like you're like what what are we doing here? Like I, we were just looking back at like the past 10 years and, and growing the businesses. And, and it's like, you know, you could have taken a path that's very traditional, very standard, very cookie cutter. And that might've been great, but I, for some reason, it just, I, I never wanted that path. Did you feel the same way? I mean, right out of college you started. So. I think I knew, this is what I knew I was going to do in some, I was going to be an entrepreneur. I knew that I just knew that when I, at 14 years old, I knew that, um, you know, I started a lawn company, car washing, lawn business at 10, car washing company, like all that stuff. So I just knew this was my path. I didn't, I didn't know how I was going to get there, but I knew it was going to be my path. Um, but yeah, there are the same situations. You, some days you're like, why the hell am I just <laughs> grinding this out? Like some days it's, it's seven days a week. It's 12 hours a day. There are no days off. And then finally you get a chance to sit down and you're, and you're, you're like, Oh, I'm kind of bored. <laughs> you know, what, what am I doing? So, um, but the, you know, I think it's, and this has happened over time. I would say probably in the last five to seven years, because we have, we have, an, we probably have 350, maybe 400 employees full and part-time. Wow. I think having the opportunity to create jobs for people and, and, and have that uh, provision for them and, and being able to see them flourish and do things is rewarding. And I, I never looked at it that way when I started out, you know, you kind of think, oh gosh, employees is going to be, it's going to be hard. And, and employees are hard. There are, there are difficulties with it. Having more employees does pose challenges, not just from personnel, but just there's risk. There's other things that happen. Um, but overall it's, it's rewarding to see the people that you enjoy working with you know, having jobs that, that, that I've created for them. And I hope that they have an environment that they like working for, for me and, and, and the company. And I never think of myself, I'm your boss. I mean, I never think of that. It's, it's really a team approach for us. Right. And we're, we're all pretty close. And, and there are folks that have been here since the beginning. And, and the most rewarding thing to me, and I tell this to everybody is when people talk about Coppermine, I rarely get the, oh gosh, you have a really nice facility what I love the most is when they tell me coach so-and-so is it does an amazing job with my child. Mm-hmm. And that's the most rewarding thing for me. Not that my name, that cop mine's on the building or anything like that, or what, what I did. The most rewarding is them telling me how great our staff is because that's the, that's the real reward for me. Wow. And it's, it's the culture and the community impact. And right. that's just the ripple effect. And you know, to speak to your team, your team is amazing. I have gone to multiple locations, either with my kids or birthday parties or had birthday parties there, personally playing tennis, which has been just a really great indoor gift activity, which has been awesome, your, your growth in that area. And it just is so important. And your team is, is great. And when you grow your people, your company grows. And, you know, when you really start on their personal growth, their development, that's when really great things happen. Right. So um, we're going to wrap things up here, but I want to um, ask you a few more questions. So what is your best advice or what is the best advice you have ever received from a business standpoint that you'd like to share? Okay. Um, So when I first started my company, Chesapeake Design Works, I was doing um, work for a larger clothing company that that, um, I had a chance to meet the owner. And he told me, he said, Alex, whatever you do, set your life up so you work the hardest and make the most amount you can or build whatever you can in your 40s. Mm-hmm. And so I always stuck with me to, 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 to and I'm 48 years old, so mm-hmm. I'm trying to run and gun as hard as I can listening to that advice. 
he said because at 50 you know you're, you don't have as much of the drive as you did in you know leading up to your 40s and that sort of thing so that mm -hmm. was one advice he gave me um and and the other thing is uh i would say you know growing up i was pretty pretty um i would say cocky kid or whatever playing sports and those sort of things and i think as you get older in business i think being more humble mm -hmm. and understanding how important relationships are is allowed me to pretty much work with a lot of different people. There are things that happen and that knock you down and, and to just literally step back and understand because I've had competitors and things happen to me that I've turned around into, you know, good relationships and, and being able to have the humility and understand how to get through you know, certain circumstances, um, just follow your, follow your path, follow your heart and it'll, it'll work out. Okay. So, so and, there's, and then don't be afraid to make mistakes. I mean, that's, that's the other thing. It's, you know, the, the fear is the biggest, um, I would say obstacle for most entrepreneurs is, is having fear. So mm -hmm. I get through that. I love your honesty and I love how real and open you've been with us here today. I'm really grateful for that. And I know, I know that, you know, we have so many listeners out there, whether they're walking their dog or just kind of, you know, out and about in the car and having those moments that you're, you're lifting them up. You're giving them a little pep talk right now. So thank you for that. No problem. So how can we help you? What is your big ask? What do you want to put out to the universe? Um, share anything and everything. I know it's summertime and you're probably like camp, camps, camp, camps, camps, or just anything and anything that we can help you with here. Um, I think, you know, we're creating an ecosystem around Compromise. It's not just kids sports. We started a, a marketing and advertising firm. We are doing a lot with local restaurants. I think the more facilities that we create, we are creating the synergies between you know, our, our customers, our employees, and being the conduit to other local entrepreneurs. We have 50,000 people in our database. We market them in, in mail to 45, 50,000 people as well. So as we continue to expand, mm -hmm. I love, I just, I love capitalism. I love the entrepreneurial spirit. I've, it's always been in me. I'll never forget where I started. Mm -hmm. And so the opportunity to help local entrepreneurs is amazing. I think we can be that conduit and that lightning rod to help them get their businesses started or create, have ideas or market to different uh, parts of the population. I think we have that opportunity. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, Alex, you are a rock star. I can, I love that you are at that sprint to 50 and you've got your eye on 20. I'm sure you've got your eye on so much more than you shared today. So I just, I love your story and I really appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow, what an episode. Did you learn something new? I hope so. I am so happy you were able to be here with us today. I'd love to hear from you. Leave me a review and I will be sure to read it and respond to you. Also, if you'd like to email me, my email address is urock at iEvolveConsulting.com. Hit subscribe and every Tuesday you'll get notification when the next episode drops. We really have some amazing interviews and tips in the future. Anything you need, I'm here for you. I want you to keep your momentum. I want to help you stay accountable. I want you to stay inspired. I want you to evolve. So please let me know what you need and I'd love to hear from you. Take care until next time.